Streaming live, this is News 12 Now. And good morning to you. We are talking about hail. We've seen a whole lot of hail the last couple of days in the Arklatex with these big thunderstorms that have been rolling through. And so what I wanted to do today is kind of talk about how it actually forms, how hail actually forms within the thunderstorm. So we'll kind of go through the process of that, and then we'll talk about hail size, how to properly measure hail. And I'm going to go ahead and show you some viewer photos that we have because the viewer pictures that we've been getting from these storms lately are very, very impressive. We have seen some big time hail so far across the Arklatex. So let's kind of talk about how hail forms in the first place. So you got to have the thunderstorm. You have the big cumulonimbus cloud. That's the towering cloud that forms. And typically when you get a big hailstorm, the height, the level of this cloud can get up to, you know, 40, 50,000 feet up in the atmosphere. So that is even taller than a lot of jet aircraft fly. So you have a tall thunderstorm building high up into the atmosphere. And then what happens is, is you get an updraft. So that's some strong winds pushing up through that storm cloud. And so the updraft carries a little particle of water up high into the cloud. And as that particle of water travels above the freezing level in the cloud, it develops a layer of ice. So a layer of ice will form on that water droplet and then it drops back below the freezing level and it kind of repeats that process. So it's basically a cycle. And every time that water droplet pushes back up through the cloud, through that freezing level, through that freezing layer, it will develop another layer of ice. So if you were actually to take a hailstone and cut it in half, you would actually see rings, kind of like you see when you cut a tree stump. You see the rings of the tree. Same deal here. When you when you look inside of a hailstone, like a large piece of hail, cut it in half, you'll see rings. And you can see that there on the left-hand side of your graphic. It almost looks like tree rings. And what that is, each ring is a different layer of ice. And that tells you how many times that water droplet moved up and down within that thunderstorm. So kind of interesting. But eventually, the uh, water droplet gets so heavy uh, that the weight exceeds the updraft strength. So you get those strong updraft winds. That's the wind pushing up through the thunderstorm, and that can be on the order of 100 miles an hour. So think of a 100 mile an hour wind pushing up through that thunderstorm, and then eventually the actual weight of that hailstone gets too great for that updraft, and the hailstone will just fall to the ground. But by that time, a lot of times these hailstones can be very, very large in diameter. So as far as hail sizes here, um, this is kind of what we refer to. You know, we hear us talking about quarter size hail, golf ball size hail, baseball size, size hail. You hear us talking about it all the time on air, uh, but what exactly are we talking about here as far as the measurements? Uh, so what you need to think about is that when we say inch diameter hail, that's about the size of a quarter. When we say a storm is producing golf ball size hail, that's about an inch and three quarters. And by the time you get up to like ping pong golf ball size, that is typically when you start to see a lot of damage out of these storms. And that's typically uh, when we start to see some damage to cars, and to roofs and things like that. Um, now, when you get up to about tennis ball size, that's some really damaging hail. That's a hail size of about two and a half inches in diameter. So tennis ball size hail, that is when, you know, it can start to really shatter your windshield. It can punch holes in the roof of the, of the, um, the house if it's a poorly made home. Uh, when you get to baseball size hail, that's about 2.75 inches in diameter. And then you get into the softball size, grapefruit size hail. That's pretty rare. We don't see that all that often. That's only reserved for the top thunderstorms, the most strongest storms. But when you get up to softball and grapefruit size, hail that is exceptionally rare and you don't see it very often but when it does happen that is extremely damaging and deadly and that can actually punch a hole straight through the roof of your house so that is when things get really really dangerous is when you start to get anything above you know tennis ball to baseball size especially getting that softball size and grapefruit size hail that is when things get very very dangerous so what i want to do now is actually show you some of viewer photos because uh, we have seen some impressive photos here. So let's take you to that and look at this. So this is actually submitted uh, through the KSLA app. So you can download the weather app and you can actually, you know, submit storm photos or any sort of hail photos, anything that is kind of catches your eye. You can definitely submit that to the app. But this was actually uh, taken um, and that was during the middle portion of June. So this was, I believe, uh, June 14th and 15th across the Arklatex as we had a severe storm that rolled through. We actually had a series of severe storms that rolled through the area, but this is uh, some large hail that some of you saw in Gary, Texas. That is in Panola County. And um, that right there, as we just showed you that hail chart a second ago, so that would qualify as likely uh, tennis ball size hail there. But look at the damage that that created. I mean, it completely smashed out some car windshields there. Of course, it caused a lot of roof damage. Um, trees were kind of shredded apart. 
If you had your garden, it probably did not survive that, but that is some impressive hail. Um, another picture out of the same region of that large hail. Uh, we actually have some videos that were submitted from the area too. You can see some of that hail falling and it was it was quite impressive as it was falling across our area. Uh, this was actually in Nashville, Arkansas. So it, was, it wasn't just East Texas. We had a lot of hail in Arkansas and even Northern Louisiana had a lot of hail. And that was again during that June 13th through June 15th timeframe. So there was that three day window there where we had quite a bit of severe weather across the region. And we had a lot of viewers that submitted some uh, videos. And then you can see that that was from uh, Sevier County in Arkansas. And that's kind of a good comparison there. So you have the quarter next to that hailstone. You can see that that hailstone is actually a lot larger even than that quarter. So that's probably golf ball size hail. Uh, another video out of Nashville, Arkansas, and then some, just some cool cloud photos out of Panola County. You can see all of the turbulence there in the skies um, as that storm is rolling through. But look at this kind of interesting here. Uh, hailstones don't always have to be perfect circles. They don't have to be circular in diameter. It just kind of depends on how the hailstone is created within that thunderstorm. So they're not all created equal, but look at this picture that was sent to us also from Panola County. And you can see how that hailstone kind of has spikes to it. So that kind of adds to the danger when you have hailstones like that. Um, and there's a good comparison too. You can see that hailstone next to that person's foot, just how large that actually is. Uh, so yeah, definitely some large hail across the area. Look at this picture. This was also out of Gary, Texas, and you can see how large that hail was and the spikiness to some of those hailstones, which indicates that there was just a lot of turbulence as that hailstone was created within that thunderstorm. Um, Rodessa, Louisiana, you can see more hail there. Uh, kind of a good example, a little comparison to that pocket knife there in uh, Dirks, Arkansas. Uh, it just goes on and on. We've had so much hail the last uh, several weeks in the Arklatex. Look at this, huge hailstones there, once again, out of Panola County. That was the area that was really hard hit uh, across our region. So we'll take you and look at some more hail photos. You can see um, Kilgore, Texas, uh, Tom, Oklahoma, uh, here's a good one. Let's look at this video here. And this was uh, north of Tom, Oklahoma. Uh, so just watch this. Watch, look at this is right after the hail storm had left, but you can see just how large that hail is. And there's another picture out of Tom, Oklahoma, um, Marion County, uh, the Jefferson, Texas. You can see a lot of the hail there and just a lot of uh, flooding as well taking place and just it just has been a very active stretch of weather. But again, uh, we are talking about hail. If you're just uh, joining us for this special um, special web thing that we're doing here, we're talking about hail, how it's formed. We were showing some of the viewer photos. Uh, but again, we've had some extremely large hail events. And, you know, typically as we get into into this time of year, we start to lose a lot of that severe weather potential. So as we mentioned, I did one of these uh, special web, web segments a few weeks back. We were talking about how typically in the month of uh, May, we start to peak our severe weather. And then in June, we start to see that really decline. But this has been kind of an unusual season so far because uh, May was actually a pretty quiet month for us. And then so far in the first half of June, it has actually gotten pretty active. We've seen a lot more severe weather. Um, eventually, though, it looks like that will start to kind of wind down and the severe weather threat We'll start to wind down as we head towards the end of the month. Uh, you know, we're going to start to get start to lose some of those upper level dynamics. So our threat will eventually shift from the severe weather to some extreme heat and humidity here as we head towards the month of June.